Hello everyone, I hope you're all well and enjoying the slightly warmer weather that seems to have appeared out of nowhere. It's actually sunny now. Um, this video is a follow-up to my last video about Dover Castle and as always the sources I've used will be listed in the description underneath the video so you can check them out if you want to see where I got my info from. Now then, until the Second Baronial War, which lasted from 1264 to 1267, Dover Castle remained a very visible symbol of English royal power. It was used by countless noblemen and women as a place to stay, uh, especially when visiting the shrine of Thomas Becket in Canterbury, which is about 16 miles to the northwest. Although the castle remained primarily a military site, people who stayed in Dover weren't neglected because of its military purpose. The keep had two beautifully designed Norman chapels, and within the castle walls lay the Saxon church of St Mary in Castro. The top floor of the great keep was dedicated entirely to living quarters for the lord of the castle, or visiting lords, and as at Rochester Castle, there were private sleeping quarters specifically for the Archbishop of Canterbury if he stayed there. So, in April 1264, Simon de Montfort, shown here in a depiction of him from about 1250, became the constable of Dover Castle, presiding over the royalist hostages that supported Henry III. Simon de Montfort became the kind of de facto ruler of England after the Battle of Lewis in May 1264, when he took Henry III and his son Edward prisoner. If you've just come from my first video about Dover Castle, and if not, I recommend watching that one first, just for a bit of background information. You're probably wondering how on earth Henry III managed to <laughs> mess up so badly that he was taken prisoner in his own country. We've got to rewind a bit. So, in the mid-1250s, Henry III's treasury all but disappeared while funding a war in Sicily on behalf of Pope Innocent IV. That's not super important for this video, but basically what it means is that Henry had run out of money and his barons weren't very happy with that. Simon de Montfort led a group of seven barons to force Henry to agree to the things called the Provisions of Oxford in 1258, which essentially transferred a lot of political power from the king to his barons, which was based largely on the role that Magna Carta had played less than 50 years earlier. Over the next five years, there was a very turbulent power struggle between Henry III and his barons. By the way, does this sound familiar to anyone else? Um, well, Henry III essentially bought the support of the French king and Simon de Montfort had to flee England and policies were put in place by the king that further provoked his barons. He was annoying them even more. Then in 1263, Simon de Montfort returned to England and regrouped with the barons who opposed Henry III. He gathered an army and eventually marched on London, where Henry was. The city of London rallied to de Montfort and imprisoned the king and queen in the Tower of London, so they were taking sides with Simon. But Simon's support became weaker, however, when the French king sided with Henry. Henry was granted his freedom and both sides prepared for the eventual war. On the 14th of May, at the Battle of Lewis, de Montfort and Henry came face to face and de Montfort was victorious. He took, he took Henry prisoner, and then one year later, on the 28th of May 1265, the future King Edward, who was also a prisoner of de Montfort, managed to escape custody. Now that we're all caught up, we can get back to Dover Castle, um, and the chain of events that followed Edward escaping led to Eleanor de Montfort, who was Simon's wife, to seek protection first in Porchester Castle, and then to move to the more safe Dover Castle. Eleanor took to improving the defences of the castle after her son, Simon the Younger, left Dover to help his father counter Lord Edward's soldiers in the Welsh marches. She took full control and stocked the storage rooms with weapons and food in the case of a siege. Due to the location of Dover Castle, as I discussed last time, Eleanor was able to draw support from sympathisers across the Sink ports and the southeast of England who supported her husband. She promoted Simon's cause across Kent and Sussex, all from within the walls of Dover Castle. She took full advantage of the castle in an attempt to keep her supporters around her by utilising the range of like new domestic buildings and the new um, Arthur's Hall 
which had been built when Henry III married Eleanor of Provence in 1236. The Grand Tower had had like recent interior renovations, and those who came to visit Eleanor stayed in those chambers, which like displayed the grandeur of Dover Castle. Then on the 4th of August in 1265, both her husband Simon and her son Simon the Younger died at the Battle of Evesham. Eleanor remained at Dover and used the strategic importance of the castle to continue directing resistance in the southeast of England. She remained kind of entrenched in Dover and hired both two stonemasons and two servants to make furnaces in order to improve the defences. Dover Castle had, until this point, remained completely undefeated. A chronicler at the time documented an attempt by royalist captives within the castle to bribe their guards and take the castle from the inside. Now, this attempt did fail, but it's supposedly this that spurred Lord Edward on to besiege the castle. As we know, the castle was very well built to withstand attacks, so the only way to bring it down would actually be to have insiders sabotage some element of its defence. Um, so the castle survived Edward's siege for several months, both due to the physical buildings of the castle and the administrative and planning skills of Eleanor. And at the end of October in 1265, she negotiated a surrender with Edward and left for France with her daughter. The castle had, for the second time in a century, withstood a siege and shown that it was kind of an impregnable fortress of massive importance in the defence and protection of England. Now, as I said last time, the location is probably the most important part of Dover's importance. Um, and I think, well, once lockdowns are kind of eased, restricted, I would recommend going to see it if you can. It's an English heritage site and you can pay to get in or if you're a member, you can get in for free. Um, it's like a, it's a fantastic castle. And just seeing it nowadays, you kind of realize why at the time it was seen as such an important place the actual buildings are fantastic um but yeah so that's the that's the follow-up to my dover castle video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you learned something new from it and i hope to see you soon in the next video and if you did like this video please remember to share it with people you think might enjoy or um, like or subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future thank you very much